Yo, there's a lot of games coming to the Switch in the month of November. On November 4th, we have It Takes Two finally making its debut on the Switch. It takes two, baby. It takes two, baby. It's got an interesting story, an interesting premise, kind of a heartfelt thing about family and whatnot. The gameplay seems to be really cool. It's a co-op game that you play with someone in the same room or you can play with someone online to get through the game. Like this game evidently is, is really freaking good. I mean, it won like game of the year a couple years ago and now it's finally making its debut on the Switch. I do have some concerns about the performance of this game running on the Switch. It looked a little janky when we saw it announced at the Nintendo Direct presentation. However, gameplay triumphs over anything else. So I think it takes two will find a place on the Switch when it comes out on November 4th. Now, before we get into the next game on our list, I want to give a huge thank you to Premium Edition Games for sponsoring today's video. We all know that the best way to buy video games is the physical edition of the game, and recently Premium Edition Games has been releasing tons of great content on the Nintendo Switch, but they're now teaming up with Retroware to offer two brand new titles available in physical format for the first time. Eagle Island Twist is a 2D puzzle platformer that constantly changes the style of level you play throughout the game, and considering there's 45 stages to traverse in it, it's a lot of game to experience. You and your eagle companion go throughout battling bosses, leveling up, and exploring this absolutely gorgeous 16-bit inspired platformer. Now, Love 3 may have a minimalistic art style, but with excellent review scores, this 2D platformer offers a ton of content, challenging level design, hidden levels, and even the ability to set your own checkpoints for the more difficult areas for you. Now both of these games are up for pre-order on premiumeditiongames.com or be lazy and use the link in the description box down below in physical format with a variety of different ways to purchase them. Whether you just want the game itself with a color manual and case or you want a deluxe edition with extra goodies, there's something for collectors of all types and styles and there's even a cool dual pack that comes with both versions of both titles plus some extra goodies. Pre-orders are live until November 7th so don't wait too late, click the link in the description box down below and secure your copies of these games and a huge thank you to retroware and premium edition games for sponsoring today's video also on november 4th we have harvest stella a farming sim rpg coming to us from the good old folks over at square enix yes the running gag was that there was way too many farming sims at the latest nintendo direct and to me it was not a gag this is actually a reality but harvestella does look actually pretty decent because it seems like it focuses more on the rpg side of things more so than just the farming side of things i don't have a beef with farming sims i used to play games like harvest moon back in the day legend of the river king had some sort of you know harvesting elements to it but harvestella does look like one of the better games from this genre so if you're a fan of jrpgs once again you're getting another square enix game so you should be a very very happy individual harvestella launches exclusively on the switch on november 4th on november 8th we have sifu not seafood sifu hitting the nintendo switch and much like it takes two this was kind of a surprise game announcement from the latest nintendo direct and also like it takes two i do have some concerns about the potential performance of this game but I think the premise is interesting enough. Every time you die in the game, your character ages like three years. So you eventually get to a point where your character is too old to progress through the game, so you kind of got to start over. That might sound like a frustrating thing, but I think it's actually a pretty interesting gameplay loop. This game did release on PlayStation platforms. It was pretty well received. A lot of people seem to enjoy it. I never got around to playing it, but I might end up checking out this game on November 8th because I like the premise. I like karate stuff, beat-em-ups. They're fun games, and Sifu looks like a fun game. Also on November 8th, we have arguably my most anticipated game for the month. Yeah, I said it, okay? Oh, oh, for the month, period. Over God of War, over the Pokemans. All right, it's, it's Sonic freaking Frontiers, okay? Sonic is coming back with this game. You cannot rain on my parade until this game comes out and colossally disappoints me, but all the signs are there that this is going to be a good Sonic game. I don't need a great Sonic game. I don't need a 9 out of 10, a 10 out of 10. Give me a solid 7 out of 10, and I'm happy as a pig in mud. That is what I want. That is what I expect from this. And really, I think Sonic Frontiers has proved a lot of people to be wrong. A lot of people wrote this game off when they first showcased it, and I think over time, the sort of narrative for this game has changed. Now people are actually genuinely interested in this game. Preview seem really good hands-on impressions seem to be impressive as well from all sorts of different people from the press i don't know man i just have a lot of hope in sonic frontiers like i said this is my most anticipated game for the month of november regardless of the platform i want my sonic frontiers it's coming out on the switch on november 8th along with other platforms so i might have to double dip because if the switch version is a little shoddy 
Well, I might have to play it on my Xbox. Sonic Frontiers, let's go, baby. It's time for Sonic to return to dominance. On November 10th, we had a game that I've never heard of before, but now I'm very excited for it. It is the Jurassic World Aftermath Collection. Now, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World stuff, I'm usually pretty on the button with that stuff. I, you know, keep my ear to the streets about it because I'm a man who loves dinosaurs, but I never heard of this before. Evidently, this came out on things like Oculus. It was like a VR experience where we are having to play like a stealth game hiding from raptors and stuff and that sounds absolutely fantastic now this is a collection of all the different episodes that released on oculus now coming to the switch i don't think it's coming out on any other platform so that just shows you that the switch is the coolest system in the world because they're getting more dinosaur games with jurassic world aftermath collection i'm buying this on day one if i don't get a review copy because i am genuinely interested in what this game is about and hopefully it doesn't suck jurassic world aftermath collection november 10th Gaming compilations are a dime a dozen on the Switch, and I love the retro style ones. And this one might honestly be the most impressive one that we've gotten so far, and that is the Atari 50th Anniversary Collection. Now, what makes this special is, yes, there's there's been a million Atari collections with you know, your little centipedes, your millipedes, your Atari 2600 games. Like, I, I feel like they've done that to death. But what's cool about this is they actually remembered that they made other systems. There's Atari freaking Jaguar games on this, okay? The Atari Jaguar. There's Atari Lynx games on this. There's tons of behind the scenes footage. There's a variety of different games from the 7800, the 2600, the 5200, some Atari ST games, some Atari Car arcade games. I can't even talk because I'm so excited about the Atari 50th anniversary collection. It's also being handled by Digital Eclipse, who of course you know from games like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Cowabunga collection. So it seems Seems like this game is in good hands and honestly this is a game i'm really looking forward to seeing atari jaguar games finally come to the switch in some way shape or form and a lot of people being able to play these games for the first time i think it's gonna be really cool i'm interested in seeing the bonus content as well so sign me the hell up man atari the 50th anniversary collection on november 11th also on november 11th a classic strategy jrpg game that was released back in like 2010 gets a new life on the nintendo switch with tactics ogre reborn now the ogre series has been around for a while there's been all sorts of variations for it tactics ogre reborn i believe was the last one that they made as far as new games are concerned so this is once again a return to tactics ogre the original title that released back in 2010 but with modern conveniences such as better graphics better controls more things added into the game and who doesn't love a strategy rpg that's one thing that i don't think the nintendo switch quite has enough of are rpg games obviously nintendo loves japan so they have to be loving all these jrpgs and strategy jrpgs tactics ogre reborn on november 11th yet another square enix game on november 18th this is probably i guess the game that everyone's looking forward to as the big game for the month even though it's not sonic frontiers and that is of course pokemon scarlet and pokemon violet a new direction for the pokemon franchise open world multiple paths to complete your quest with three different ways to play throughout the game new pokemon new areas to visit new characters to come across new gameplay mechanics new 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 what doesn't look all that new is the kind of shoddy graphics of the game we talked about it a couple days ago there were some concerns from places like nintendo life who got a hands-on preview of this game saying that the performance wasn't quite up to snuff for what they expected with it but it doesn't matter it honestly doesn't matter you could take a dump in a box and write pokemon on the side of it and it's selling 10 million copies it, it, it does not matter you can make a game where you literally turn on the game and nothing happens the game doesn't even turn on but just got a pokemon on it so it's selling 15 million copies pokemon scarlet and violet though all jokes aside i do think it's going to be a really fun game i'm actually looking forward to this i'll be picking up scarlet because I don't know, Scarlet sounds a little bit more manly to me than Violet. Like, Violet, I don't know. Like, Violet Beauregard, Scarlet Johansson. Like, I don't know. I guess they're both kind of feminine names. But I'm going with Scarlet. Sounds a little bit cool. Scars are cool. I have lots of scars on my body. Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, November 18th. You're probably going to be one of those people who buys both versions of the game, though, aren't you? And the final game we have to talk about is a game that actually released on the Xbox. I played it via Game Pass, but I was surprised to see it come to the Switch because the first game ended up coming to the Switch, but I didn't think the sequel would. And that is Origami 2 coming out on November 25th. I like Origami. It seems like nobody likes this franchise, and I don't really get why. Like, it's fun. It's a stealthy sort of ninja game that kind of reminds me a bit of Tenshu, and there's lots of different things you could do. You utilize the shadow mechanics to your advantage. You could kind of blend in with the shadows, drop down on enemies, or avoid enemies, combat enemies. 
I really like the origami games and origami 2 I didn't finish it but the one I played from it I thought was a really fun experience and helped sort of grow the origami franchise by making sort of wider areas and more open areas to visit which really gave you a sense of immersion I hope that origami 2 runs good on the Nintendo switch because I think this could be the hidden gem alert for the month of November and it comes out on November 25th all right guys so that's gonna do it for today's video let me know in the comment section down below what games you plan on picking up um I would say Sonic Frontiers is a lock, Jurassic World Aftermath is a lock, the Atari thing is a lock, Pokemon Scarlet is a lock, um, Sifu maybe? If you guys want me to review Sifu running on the Switch, let me know in the comments section down below and I can fit that into my busy schedule. But yeah, a very solid month. Of course, that's just the stuff we know about. There could be more stuff that is added from different uh, indie companies and whatnot. So exciting stuff, man. A really good month and a lot of good variety too. That, that's what I like to see. So let me know in the comments what you're picking up. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. We are well on the way to 450,000 subscribers, which really is the road to 500K. That's the number I want. Once I get there, I'll be happy because they'll never let me hit a million. They'll never let he me hit a million. Thank you to Premium Edition Games and Retroware for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you guys go get your copy of Eagle Island Twist and, of course, Love 3. Two really good-ass games. And why not get them physically? Because physical rules. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.